What's up everyone, my name is Ali. Welcome back to my world of stocks. In today's video, I've got a brand new addition to my stock portfolio to share with you guys, and that is the gaming giant Take-Two Interactive, ticker symbol TTWO, which is the maker of some very popular titles like Grand Theft Auto and NBA 2K. Now this is for my personal portfolio, not the community one, and it's a little bit of a riskier pickup here, but I just think that there's several reasons why I wanna start dipping my toes into this stock right now and then try to add more in the future. So let's not waste any time. I'm gonna show you what this stock is, exactly why I'm buying it and what my hopes are for it in the future. Let's dig right in. Okay, so just a really quick intro into what this company is. Uh, Take-Two is really the parent company of Rockstar Games, 2K, Zynga, and Private Division. Now, Rockstar is of course famous for some of the biggest game franchises in history, like Grand Theft Auto, which I'll come back to in just a minute because the next iteration is set to release in about a year from now, and it's a giant part of my investing thesis for the stock. But they also make Red Dead Redemption and several other games. Uh, 2K is really known for their NBA 2K series, and they used to make some very popular NFL games too. However, sadly, that NFL contract has been exclusive to EA Electronic Arts for years now, which I believe is now extended through 2026 for NFL simulation games, which many fans are upset over since EA's Madden has been really going downhill ever since. There is some light at the end of the tunnel though, with 2K being allowed to make a non-simulation NFL game, which they are reportedly working on as we speak, but we can only wait and see just how good a more arcade style version of that would be or how gamers would uh, receive it. Regardless though, I'm just happy that something is coming outside of EA for football because I used to love the old 2K games and Fever and even the older Maddens too before they gained that exclusivity and started going downhill. On top of that though, 2K also makes the new Lego Drive game which has been very popular with kids. They make the WWE wrestling games with another iteration releasing in a couple months and and they make several mobile versions of their games too. Now, Private Division is a lot smaller, but it has published a few popular titles like The Outer Worlds and is even working on an upcoming Lord of the Rings game that has a lot of hype and attention behind it called Tales of the Shire, which I think could be a breakout star for them in the future. But then finally, we also have Zynga, and that is mostly a mobile developer, which I actually used to own stock of this one before Take-Two acquired them back in 2022. But they're famous for games like CSR Racing, Farmville, Zynga Poker, Wars with Friends, and many more. They even have some licensed games for Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, and Star Wars 2. In all, it's made for a very large gaming company for Take-Two here that usually does billions in sales and millions in profit. Fiscal 2023 did see a big drop off though, but it's been due to some huge write downs. In fact, when you adjust for these uh, one-time impacts, their EBITDA profit actually rose significantly in the past six months to over $137 million, which they're estimating could rise to around $400 million in fiscal 2024. And putting all of that aside, we can just look at sales alone and see that this is a very strong company here with continued growth in pretty much all years. Now, fiscal 2023, you see that 54% pop because of the Zynga acquisition with a big slowdown expected the year after. But that's usually the trend for gaming companies. They can sometimes have a year or two of little growth because of really not releasing any huge blockbuster titles as those take many years to develop. But when they do release a big hit, you often see the results right away. And that's why fiscal 2025 is estimated to see a gigantic rise of over 40% to nearly $8 billion, which is more than double what they did just a couple years prior. And I can tell you right away what this has pretty much entirely to do with. It's the launch of the new Grand Theft Auto game, which I can also tell you that this is the main reason why I'm buying into the stock myself. Now, in the meantime, the stock could be shaky, but I'm ready to start buying right now regardless, and I'll explain to you why. So let's pull up the stock chart and I'll show you what I plan to do here with the stock and why I look at GTA 6 as being a bit of a safety net for buying the stock early. Okay, so first of all, the stock itself has been a strong performer, and to be honest, 
I really wish that it was a lot cheaper right now, but unfortunately, it's up quite a lot. Having said that though, it's not all bad news on the valuation front because there was at least a decent sized drop coming off of the pandemic of more than a quarter of its value, which is where I bought in just now, as you can see on this screenshot here. But on top of that, according to Seeking Alpha, the adjusted PEG ratio that factors in future growth is sitting at only around 1.65, which is not only cheaper than the most comparable public company in electronic arts by 24%, but it's also just barely higher than the sector median as well. So for an industry leader like this to actually be trading about the same as the sector, I mean, that's not too bad at all. And again, the idea here is that even if the stock does fall, which is very possible because the economy is obviously very shaky right now, the stock market is up a lot, and uh, I do think that we will have some volatility here in the upcoming year because of all that. But even if any of that happens and stock prices go down, the idea is that I can take advantage of all of that volatility and buy more of this stock because I have at least something to look forward to over the longer term that's in GTA 6 uh, really being a giant tailwind for the stock. And let me explain why here. I mean, if you look at the last iteration, GTA 5, it is the second best-selling game of all time with nearly 200 million copies sold. And if you think that's crazy, their other game, Red Dead Redemption 2, is also the eighth best-selling game of all time too. So those are major hits that they have on their hands. But again, my focus is on GTA because the reception has already been gigantic with the trailer itself breaking the Guinness World Record for most viewed YouTube video in 24 hours that isn't a music video. How, how freaking crazy is that? It's insane. And by the way, that reveal trailer happened in December, yet the stock only rose by less than 2% that month. And it even gave much of that back in January too. So I think there's still room to pop here on all of the hype going into the release and also post-release of uh, GTA 6 and over over the longer term, uh, I think it's actually gonna outsell GTA 5 and I think it's gonna be one of the biggest games just absolutely ever. But that's not even my main reason for buying the stock. That honor goes to microtransactions, which I know they're very controversial, but unfortunately for us gamers, they're not going away because they make way too much money for these companies. See, recurring spending uh, is already said to make up around 80% of Take-Two's business right now. And according to a report from the Wall Street Journal, just GTA Online alone made over half a billion dollars just in the last fiscal year. That's insane, guys. And mind you, this is where all of their profits really come from because microtransactions have nearly 100% profit margins. Now, th there's a lot more that goes into this. There's development and there's also profits that come from other sources too. So this isn't um, just kind of like a end all be all. But what I'm saying here is that when people go into these games and they spend real money on in-game items or virtual currency, that ends up being like pure profit that goes straight into these companies' pockets. And Take-Two is no different. And GTA can really be a cash cow if they utilize it correctly. And so you couple that with the growing games market that is already worth hundreds of billions of dollars with some analysts even projecting it to reach over a trillion in the not too distant future. And you also look at the future of the metaverse where gaming will play one of the biggest roles in it. And you can see why a giant company like Microsoft was willing to pay about $70 billion to acquire Activision Blizzard last year. Now, I'm not saying that Take-Two will also get bought out, but if you look at the timeline, Activision's market cap in 2019 was as low as just about $30 billion, which is near what Take-Two trades at today. And also back then, Activision was making roughly the same amount of revenue that Take-Two is projected to make next year. So there are some comparisons there. And there's a couple things on that. So for one, we know that Activision traded more than double that market cap before 2019, and after they also traded as high as over 80 billion. Then they sunk back down, but then it rose right back up again on the acquisition from Microsoft. So while I'm not saying that Take-Two is in the same exact situation or that it should even be treated the same, what I am saying is that there is at least some type of precedent here for these giant gaming companies to be worth unbelievable amounts of money. And Activision was ultimately bought for two to three times the amount of what Take-Two is worth today. And so with the best-selling game in GTA and the cash cow that it's going to be with GTA Online, I just feel that this is a ride that 
I want to start getting on. I want to start a very tiny position. I only bought a very, very small amount. I always do that. Whenever I buy into a stock, I buy a very, very tiny amount. But it, it's a stock here that I think with any kind of turbulence, any kind of market volatility, I can easily add to it. I can lower my cost basis if it does happen to go down. And over the longer term, I've got some major tailwinds to help it rise back up. So I'm pretty excited about this one. It's one of my favorite kind of new additions to the portfolio. And um, we'll see how it goes. As always, guys, this is just my opinion. Don't copy me. I'm not telling you what to do. Do your own research and make your own decisions. But either way, I just hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed hearing my opinion on it. And I'd love to hear your opinion down below in the comment section. Let me know if you think this was a smart move. If you think I'm an idiot, whatever your views are, I welcome all views and I'd love to hear your thoughts. So drop them down there for me. We can have a chat. But thanks again for stopping by, my friends. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you're doing well out there. Take care. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.